Great Falls public school officials are praising the work of some graduating seniors. Especially those stepping up to keep traditions alive in this time of uncertainty. At a special meeting this evening, board members voted to move the graduation ceremony outdoors at Montana Expo Park. Officials previously announced three separate graduation ceremonies with only graduates allowed inside. Superintendent Tom Moore said each student will now be able to bring two guests. Attendees will be physically distanced in the grandstands as graduates assemble on the rodeo grounds. He said there will be strict parking and health screening at the event with masks and social distancing encouraged. Board members gave credit to a group of seniors who they say led the effort on the new graduation plans. The group's initial petition gathered around 3,100 signatures. The students then presented their work and arguments for change to the school board last week. Moore says a survey sent to graduates and parents over the weekend showed overwhelming support for an outdoor graduation ceremony. Students who helped reshape the venue say it was a team effort with everyone from school principals to local health experts wanting to help. I was initially kind of concerned that we'd just get pushed to the wayside, but then we got told into meetings and we were talking with the doctors around town and we really made this happen and it just couldn't make me more proud. Now the Four Seasons Arena will serve as the graduation venue if severe weather moves in. Only graduating seniors will then be allowed inside. Of course, KRTV will be live streaming the graduation ceremony that day. Those details will be posted on our websites. It appears as though the community of Townsend will be getting a new elementary school. According to the Townsend School's Facebook page, a recount confirms passage of a nearly $19 million elementary school bond. Last week, the school board held its final canvas of votes that showed the bond passing by just three votes, close enough to petition a recount. That same count held up during today's recount, and the $18.8 million bond would replace the existing elementary school, which leaders say is outdated and in poor condition. Carroll College has been approved for about $3.3 million of financial assistance through the Federal Paycheck Protection Program. At first, Carroll wasn't sure they would qualify because funding was only available to employees with less, uh, to employers rather, with less than 500 employees. But after clarifying work study, students wouldn't be counted, making uh, it made Carroll eligible. The money comes at a crucial time. Ordinarily, at this time of year, Carroll's campus would be hosting a variety of conferences, camps, and other events. But this year, because of concerns over COVID-19, many of those events have been canceled. The auxiliary enterprises during the summertime are a significant part of our annual budget. And so when those auxiliary enterprises are uh, interrupted, as they were this year due to COVID-19, that provides an impact to the budget. Carol's summer session began today with all classes completely online. Dr. Sex said they haven't made a decision yet on how to handle classes next fall. Well, the Montana VA healthcare system has begun to re-implement many in-person services that had previously been suspended due to COVID-19. Montana was selected as a lead site in its regional veterans integrated service network to implement a phased approach to reintroducing healthcare services while ensuring a safe environment. Laboratory, pathology, pharmacy and radiology services have all resumed and elective procedures and dental service will continue in the coming weeks. The Montana VA will continue to screen for COVID-19 and require patients to wear a face mask when entering their facilities. The VA will also continue to utilize telehealth, which they say has been invaluable over the past two months. So here in Montana, we've been very fortunate. We have a very robust program. So we were able to very quickly pivot to be able to utilize things such as VA Video Connect, where a veteran is able to connect with their provider via a smartphone or a tablet. For veterans that weren't able to uh, use that capability, telephone visits have occurred. The Montana VA urges veterans to reach out if they are experiencing any kind of medical issue and not avoid treatment. Staff say that the safety and wellness of patients has always been their primary duty. As COVID-19 concerns continue to close venues and cancel events, Cascade County Commissioners will meet this week to discuss the future of the Montana State Fair. The event is scheduled to run July 24th through the August 1st. The public discussion takes place Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. over Zoom. We'll have a link to that video conference on our website. 
And tonight we want to remind you about the Rebound Montana Relief Fund, a partnership between MTN, a and West Philanthropies, and the Montana Community Foundation. With the devastating impact COVID-19 has had on families and businesses, we have created a statewide fund to provide safety net funding for rural and tribal communities adversely affected. Now, if you can contribute, please go to krtv.com slash relief. MTN and a and West Philanthropies will match the first $150,000 donated to the Montana COVID-19 Relief Fund. Well, we continue to follow up on a story we first brought you over the weekend. A Great Falls woman faces animal cruelty charges after a fire on her property earlier this month. Pamela Jo Polyuski faces one felony count of an aggravated animal cruelty and one, or excuse me, four misdemeanor counts of cruelty to animals. Now, court documents filed last Thursday say crews seized dozens of animals in various stages of abuse and neglect on May 6th. Polyuski claims to operate an animal rescue at the location called the Hooves, Paws and Claws. Records indicate the organization was involuntarily dissolved in 2018. Cascade County Commissioner Jane Weber told MTN News that the animals are being cared for at the Montana Expo Park. All gates remain closed to the public. Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter is asking the public to respect the investigation. They're currently not looking for any donations. Now, this wasn't the first time that Paul Uyuski's property near Sun Prairie had been searched. MTN reported back in 2005 and 2012 when she faced similar accusations and animal seizures. Documents also show court violations in western Montana. In 2008, officials found over two dozen animals on her property in Libby after she was ordered not to possess any animals as part of a suspended sentence. Now, Paula Yuski has filed a civil suit against Cascade County, alleging that her rights have been violated. She's requesting that the animals be returned to her along with financial compensation. Just two weeks remain for Montana voters to cast their ballot in the primary election, and one of the top races on the ticket is for governor. Three Republicans and two Democrats are competing to become the nominees that will face off this fall to be Montana's next governor. Today in MTN's ongoing series on contested statewide primaries, chief political reporter Mike Dennison takes a closer look at the political records of the three Republicans running for governor. The GOP primary for governor has three men with extensive records as public office holders, Attorney General Tim Fox, Congressman Greg Gianforte, and State Senator Al Oshesky of Kalispell. In his nearly eight years as Attorney General, Fox points to many things he considers as accomplishments. He helped block Obama-era water and clean power regulations that he called federal overreach. He's launched a broad effort against substance abuse, including laws to reduce repeat DUI offenders and crack down on opioid prescriptions. And his office has increased tracking of sexual assault evidence and cases. Gianforte has a strong record of supporting President Trump in Congress. In the current Congress, on about 70 key votes, he has supported the president 96% of the time. Most of those are no votes on Democratic initiatives, such as voting against increasing the minimum wage, against federal negotiation of prescription drug prices, or against impeachment of the president. He also points to his sponsorship of bills that protect popular wildlands in south-central Montana and that provided recognition to the Little Shell Indian tribe. A report by the group ProPublica says Gianforte missed more votes than all but 30 House members in the current Congress. But his office notes that two-thirds of those votes were procedural budget items when Gianforte was accompanying Vice President Mike Pence on a two-day trip to Montana last June. Olszewski, an orthopedic surgeon, has been able to pass 11 of the 31 bills he has introduced during his six-year career in the legislature. Most of those bills are on medical issues, like improving incentives for rural doctors. But he also sponsored the bill that led to Montana voters restricting who could pick up their voted absentee ballots. He also has sponsored several bills to restrict abortion or protect fetuses, but they've either died or been vetoed by the governor. And he has voted against Medicaid expansion, against the Flathead Tribal Water Compact in 2015, and against last year's major infrastructure bill. Remember, you have just two weeks left to get your primary ballot into the county election office. And if you haven't registered to vote, you can do that too at the same office. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Coming up, the nation's oldest national park is back open. The entrance gates from the Montana side remain closed. Hear from business owners next.
powered by the Montana Television Network. The 10 o'clock news continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. Yellowstone National Park opened its Wyoming gates at noon today, but the Montana gates remain closed. And as MTN's John Shearer reports, now some business owners want that to change sooner rather than later. What's keeping the Montana gates to Yellowstone closed is the state's 14-day quarantine requirement for out-of-state visitors. Governor Steve Bullock insists it's working. We have the lowest hospitalizations and cases per population in the nation. So Bullock says he's unlikely to lift the quarantine until at least the 1st of June. Business owners say he should reconsider. We, we need to get open. We need to, uh, the virus is a terrible thing, but, uh, but, but we have to deal with it and uh, we, we just can't have the whole country go bankrupt. The Montana should take a, a closer look at what guidelines we have so that our businesses can get back to somewhat normal. We need to figure out how we're going to deal with the new normal because if you wait too long, you know, we can't exist. Park Superintendent Cam Shawley admits it's a tough decision. We're doing the best job that we can to reconcile divergent opinions on these issues with our partners. Shawley said he hoped Montana and Wyoming could agree on an opening date, but Bullock wants assurances that the park will be ready for the crowds. Including health screening protocols, a surveillance testing plan, the limiting of large gatherings and frequent cleaning and sanitation requirements. If they use the, the best practice, practices for mitigation and, and uh, keeping themselves and others safe, uh, we can move forward and there won't be any problems or minimal problems. But there's one step Shawley says the park just won't take. Uh, I will not put my staff at risk of having them attempt to socially distance large crowds of visitors who decide not to adhere to social distancing guidance. Business owners we spoke with agree that behavior of park visitors is the key to keeping it open. They say every business needs to impress that upon their guests. In Bozeman, John Shearer, MTN News. Well, we did have some severe weather tonight. We're actually going to see some more severe weather tomorrow. We'll have a forecast coming up next. Now, here's your Storm Tracker weather forecast with meteorologist Brandon Michaels. Well, we've had some pretty bad weather through the night tonight. Some severe weather. I want to start out with this great video from near Fairfield. Just a huge bolt of lightning crawling across the sky. We got a lot of nice reports and videos and pictures in from everybody. I want to thank you all for sending those in. It was a stormy night all across north central Montana this evening, and we're going to see that again tomorrow. Here's a severe weather outlook for tomorrow. Anywhere you're seeing shaded in the green, that's a marginal risk. That's the same risk we had tonight, so that's pretty much our entire area. And in the yellow here, that's a slight risk. That's an even higher risk, and that includes places like Haver and Lewistown. So a little bit better chance for some severe weather for tomorrow. We're going to break down those risk categories a little bit more. Again, that marginal risk, that's what we had today. Isolated severe storms possible, which is pretty much what we saw. We had really one storm that became severe. So that level run risk today, level two risk though for tomorrow. So a little better likelihood that we're going to see some more severe weather and probably a little bit more uh, frequent and severe weather tomorrow. And here's the main change from today. We're still looking at the potential for gusty winds and heavy rain tomorrow, but it's a better better chance of seeing some stronger, uh, some larger hail, including hail up to or even over one inch in size. So that's really what we're going to begin to track tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening and even into tomorrow night here. Now, of course, we're not completely done with the storms here. Let's take a look at the Doppler network. The heaviest of the rain right now is just pushing to the west of Haver, uh, about to cross Highway 2 really any second here. A couple of light scattered showers, though, through the uh, 
rest of the area. We're going to kind of zoom out to the state of Montana view. We just had a heavier band of showers and some thunderstorms move north of Howard. Those are actually going to be pushing into Great Falls here soon. Not nearly as strong as what we saw earlier in general, just kind of weak thunderstorm activity and rain expected through the night tonight. Although future track does want to pop up one or two more stronger thunderstorms. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. Definitely some weaker thunderstorms, but I'm not really expecting anything more in the way of severe weather through the night tonight. We should actually be clearing out as we head into tomorrow morning. So tomorrow is going to play out a lot like today. It's going to start off with a decent amount of sunshine. It's going to feel like a pretty nice, calm, mild day, and then we're going to see the changes into the afternoon. Here's 3 p.m. starting to see those showers and storms popping up again. They really develop as we head into the later afternoon and early evening, and then they move through the area as we head into the evening and overnight hours tomorrow. And again, we do have the potential for some of those storms to be strong or even on the severe side of things. Now, the other story is going to be the temperatures tomorrow because they're actually going to be on the warm side and it's going to be a mild night tonight. 47 in Great Falls, 48 in Helena, places like Jordan and Glasgow, mid to upper 50s for their overnight lows. Very warm there tomorrow. 85 in Glasgow, 86 degrees, the high temperature in Jordan compared to 60s to the west. And it's going to be kind of right, right where that warm and cold air meet that we have the best chance for those uh, severe thunderstorms to develop. Fortunately, not too much in the way of wind for tomorrow. But of course, if we do see some thunderstorms developing, we could always see wind gusts that are even greater than 50 miles per hour. So we'll be tracking that into the afternoon hours. We'll be tracking showers and storms for quite a while. Chances tomorrow, as we just talked about, additional chances Wednesday. Some showers are going to be possible into the day on Thursday. And even as we dry out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's still going to be an isolated chance for a couple of storms popping up here and there. Same story in Helena. Pretty decent chance of some showers and storms tomorrow, including some stronger or severe storms. Not as good of a chance for severe weather Wednesday, but still some storms and still showers into Thursday. Drier by Friday and then actually getting nicer towards the end of the forecast. We are going to be keeping on the potential for flooding with all this rain in the forecast. That's it for me. We'll send it to Tom and Cece. Cece and I cruising into the week with your social distancing game changers coming up later. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 10 o'clock news continues on Montana's News Leader. And welcome back. Well, another Monday brings us one step closer to a return to normalcy. But in the meantime, Tom Wiley brings us another edition of Social Distancing Game Changers. Some positive developments for sports fans. The high school rodeo finals given the go ahead for Baker in June. The UFC and the PBR continuing to host live events and NASCAR returned this weekend and that gave us the inspiration for CC and I to take out the cozy coop, but not before taking a look at our top moments of the week. At number five, no more trading your organs for Girl Scout cookies on the black market after a 56-day suspension of sales. Troops across Montana got the go-ahead to resume selling tagalongs, thin mints, and Samoas once again. At number four, this video was submitted by Tiffany Hobson, and this golden retriever black lab mix is Kina, and she loves watching KRTV, especially any stories with animals on them. Check out these serious hops, proof that KRTV is not just for humans. At number three, the 11 seniors on the CMR and Great Falls High softball teams were honored on Thursday in a drive-by tribute. Though their season was canceled, there's no taking away what these players accomplished, combining for four state titles in the last four years. At number two, the first of many graduation ceremonies started Saturday. Here's a look at what they did out in Highwood. Seven Mountaineers receiving their diplomas on the football field with social distancing guidelines in place. Congratulations to the entire class of 2020 during this unprecedented time. And at number one, despite stay-at-home orders and the economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, Montanans showed their generosity, purchasing over 86,000 Special Olympics Montana Chevy raffle tickets and raising over $434,000 in 2020, bringing the 26-year total for the program to just under $14 million raised for Special Olympics. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Of course, you can always share your favorite moments with us as well. Just send a video and a description in an email to homehighlights at krtv.com. We'll feature them every Monday on Game Changers. Reporting from home, Cece Wiley and Tom Wiley, MTN News. Well, though library goers might not be able to browse the shelves in search of a perfect book, the Lewis and Clark Library now has curbside pickup available at its locations. People can log into the Lewis and Clark Library online and place holds on books and movies, then collect them between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. 
or 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So far, the community response has been positive. In fact, the library may continue the service for patrons who have underlying health or transportation issues. We had over 135 people pick up items last week. We're expecting about the same this week. And as far as future outreach, uh, definitely something we are going to keep considering. There are a lot of people who not only were impacted by COVID, but it's been a good reminder. They have other underlying health issues or transportation issues or you name it. And how can we best serve them? The library is also offering digital materials, including ebooks, audiobooks, and streaming videos through several free apps. We'll be right back with a final check of weather. Welcome back. We are still tracking some showers and storms here this evening. The strongest of those still pushing up on the High Line west side of Haver. Even looks like we could see a storm swinging through Haver here shortly, but we're not done with this completely. We're going to kind of start the whole thing over again tomorrow. Marginal risk across the entire area, places like Haver and Lewistown. A slight risk of severe weather, so we're going to be tracking more storms through the day tomorrow. All right, as we said at 5.30, this is kind of a bittersweet day for us because, Brandon, it's your final on-air show. It us. is. Yeah, this is this is my last day. show right here. I'm headed to Bakersfield, California from and here. Tell us what station you're going to be working at. I'll be at uh, KERO. It's a fellow script station, one of our sister stations, so I'm staying in the company. I'll be staying yeah. in touch and yeah. Yeah, for fantasy football. We, exactly. We I got your expertise. <laughs> exactly. I've done all pretty right. well. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's all the time we have. We wish Brandon the very uh, very best. Thank, Thank you so you much guys. for all your service, and we'll see you tomorrow.